By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have more magic for you coming from the Farmstead Cup in Mirlo. And this tournament is a corset only tournament. So the players are challenged to brew their decks with Alpha, Beta, Unlimited and Revised cards. So for this tournament you can also pick Revised cards. And of course this ha has a pretty big impact on the, uh, on the type of decks that you can play. And in today's episode we're going to look at Sidil who is going to take on Anis. And both of these players are playing with the colors white and blue, but both of their decks are quite different. They really have a different approach. We see Anis kind of coming up with the classical line dip deck. And then we see Cyril with the deck that I find really important. I've called it Vice Trap because it kind of seems to be revolving around the card Black Vice. So it's quite interesting. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I would just like to point out that if you want to know more about the specific rule set, for example, Control Magic is restricted in this tournament, then please check out the description below because there I have more information about the rules and also a link to the uh, Farmstead Facebook group so you can find out more about the tournament. Another thing that you can find in the description below are several timestamps and one of those timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you want to skip the deck deck and if you want to skip, um, you know, this introduction actually, you can just go to the description below and just click on the timestamp MTG Games and go straight to the action. Now before I start with the deck deck, I would just like to point out that if you're new, welcome to the channel. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to ring that bell. Now let's start with the decks. Let's take a look at the deck of Anis first, Line Dip. And here we see Lion Dip and I have to say the first thing that I see is a Protocol Sorcerer. Really cool that you've included that one. Could actually be handy, uh, but when we look at the rest of the deck, it's pretty much self-explanatory, right? Uh, what Lion Dip wants to do is just get early pressure on through Zavanna Lions and Saranda Pafrit. And then of course kind of protect those creatures with counter magic. At the same time deal some damage here with the Sayani Blasts. One thing that I do notice is that Anis has added some more control elements in this deck. We see the two Jam Day Tomes there that's going to give him some cards. We see the Icy Manipulator. That's of course interesting because you can also choose to go for a Line Dip version with for example Red. That's what we saw last week where you put in extra bolts. Or you choose to go with four Psionic Blasts because you can also play that on uh, on the life total of the player. And in this deck, for example, you see that uh, Anis has chosen to go with four Swords to Plowshares. And Swords to Plowshares, of course, an incredibly strong card. One white to cast, destroys target creature at instant speed. Actually removes it from the game, so it's better than destroying it. But your opponent does gain life equal to the power of the creature. So that means that sometimes Swords to Plowshares is a counterproductive strategy when you're playing aggressive like what you want to do in the line dip deck, right? Because you've got your Savannah Lines and your Surrender Perfrit that will deal early combat damage and then maybe you want to finish it off, which is going to be difficult in this deck to kind of finish it off actually because only two Psionic Blasts and four Swords. So you can then choose to add red for bolts or you can choose to go for two more Psionic Blasts and take two Swords out. Or you can do, I guess, what Anis has done which is go a little bit more on the control side. Not a lot, but just a little bit more. Having those two big angels, having the icy, having the two GM day tomes, and it's kind of, you know, gives you some more ammo when the game takes a, takes a bit longer, you know, when you go into that long game perspective. So yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. And um, that's kind of a, a thing that, that I like, and maybe it's a nice side note that there are a lot of line dip decks at this event, which kind of makes sense because you allow revised, right? So that it's really tempting to then go for Savannah Line, Surrender Befreed. And remember, you don't have City in a Bottle because it's corset only. So City in a Bottle is only in Arabian Nights and not in the corsets. So, you know, you're, it's very tempting to go this route. So I'm not surprised. And I find it interesting to see all the, the different versions of the same deck, you know? And you see that a lot in old school. Yes, you have the deck, but there are so many versions to play that. And yes, you see a lot of ATOC decks, but again, there are so many different versions to play an ATOC deck. And the same can be said for a line dip deck. There are so many different versions of the deck. And I guess that one of the challenges for the players who play these more like mainstream tier one decks is to try to, okay, how am I going to tweak it 
so that it fits my play style and that it also fits the meta that I played in the best. And that's kind of the challenge there, which is quite interesting. So this is the deck of Anis. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Cyril. And here we see the deck of Cyril. And I find this a really interesting deck because when you, when you think about white and blue, I think about, or I think about control. So really the deck kind of uh, uh, decks or I think of line dip, so more the, you know, the aggressive control mix. But this is new, so this is quite interesting. I like this. This is really going full on with the copy artifact Howling Mind Black Vice Train. At least that's how I'm reading this deck. I, I could read it wrong, so Cyril, when you're watching this and I'm making any mistakes, I apologize. Let me know in the comments, by the way, if I make a mistake analyzing your deck. I think um, what this deck wants to do, of course, is win through the Black Vices. And a black vice, it's an, it's an artifact for one, and it reads uh, your opponent or target player, so you choose it when you, when you play the vice. Target player takes a damage for every card above four. So if you've got seven cards in hand, you take three damage. That's a bolt. That's pretty good. So if Cyril is on the play and he's got a vice, he can play a vice turn one. The opponent's turn uh, takes turn, he already takes three damage. So it's quite a powerful card. Now you can imagine that this card gets better when your opponent draws more cards, hence the Howling Mines. So we see three Howling Mines. He wants to play the Howling Mine next to the Vice, force his opponent to draw even more cards and take more damage. Of course, the downside of allowing your opponent to draw cards is that he's gonna draw more threats and he's gonna use that against you, right? So to make sure that, your, that the opponent of Sudil cannot do that, He's probably playing with the Armageddon. That's probably why they're in there. So I kind of feel as, feel like what he wants to do is get a Vice out ASAP, get a Howling Mine out ASAP, then kind of try to control the board with Counter Magic, Swords to Plows here, maybe with Disenchant attack, the Artifact Mana, right? The Moxon and stuff. And then draw into one of the two Armageddons, play that at the right moment, and make sure that your opponent has no lands, no Artifact Mana, cannot really play out anything, and then you're set, right? Because you've got devices and the Howling Mines going and your opponent basically dies, right? I, I think that is the A plan. And what I find interesting with this deck is, first of all, this plan I think is pretty interesting. You usually see, you know, Vice decks more in Atok-like builds or with red because you can combine it with direct damage. Of course, blue also has direct damage, which is the Psy Blast, right? He's playing with three Psy Blasts. That is 12 damage in total. That is a pretty big deal. Um, and what I find interesting here as well are the two Sarah Angels in this deck. But the reason I'm mentioning this is I'm really thinking, is are the Sarah Angels really necessary? Because you could also consider going creatureless. And the upside of going creatureless is that your opponent usually boards in, I don't know, four or five cards to deal with creatures at least. And then all those cards become useless, which is kind of nice, right? And you want your opponent to have useless cards in hand because that means the vice is actually doing extra work. Um, so an option could be, for example, to say, you know what, I'm going to take out all the creatures and I'm going to work with transformational sideboard where you put lots of creatures in. That could be an option. Then again, I'm not the person who made this build or, or you know, played with this. So I'm really interested to, deal to kind of hear your opinion on or your reasoning behind choosing to put two Sarah Angels in. Now, obviously, Sarah Angel, don't get me wrong. It's a great creature. It's one of the best creatures in old school. Two white and three to cast for a 4-4 four, four that flies and it doesn't have to tap when it attacks. And that doesn't have to tap when it attacks is actually huge. Like, it's it that that's a really big deal. You might, you know, especially when you play newer magic, you might think, okay, that's vigilance, right? Who cares? So many creatures have vigilance. But seriously, in old school, Sarah Angel, that is, it's, it's a powerful card. Anyway, this is the deck of Cyril. I'm really looking forward to seeing it in action. We've seen the deck of Anis, so I guess we're ready. Let's go! To the match. Game number one, here we go. We've got Anis sitting on the left with the line dip deck and sitting on the right, we've got Cyril with his black vice plan, vice trap. And does he have a black vice? That's a big question for him. He's on the play, taking a mulligan here, it seems, putting a card on the bottom. So starting with six, emptying his hand quickly here, playing the vice. So that means three damage for Anis. This is what Cyril wants to do, but there is that Savannah line and that is Pretty bad news for Sadil, right? When your opponent can quickly empty that hand. There is a Howling Mine. And this is a risk, but it is what Sadil wants to do. He has to play his game plan. But I wonder if it's gonna work. So first an attack by the Savannah Line, 18, and there are some options there. Could play a Disenchant. Deciding not to, there is a Savannah Line, I believe. Yeah, there's a Savannah, second Savannah Line. That means four damage. 
that Anis can deal next turn if nothing changes here. Cyril playing a copy artifact. I believe it's on the black vice. So that means, yeah, he's going to drop to 11. So it was on the vice. Going to draw two cards again. Now we could play a Surrendip. Okay, he's playing a Disenchant on that second vice. Interesting. He could have, of course, waited a bit longer. On the other hand, Cyril is now tapped out, so he doesn't have to fear any counter magic. So there's something to say for both decisions. I believe I see another copy artifact in the hand of Cyril. And he's now on 14. Again, copying the vice. And look at the life total of Anis. He's going to drop to 7. So despite the fact that he's emptying his hand pretty quickly... He's taking a lot of damage. He cannot find a land here, it seems. Missing a land drop. That is very unfortunate because he's drawing cards like crazy. He can play a Surrender, but Surrender is also a problem because it deals damage to Anis. This is really hard. And maybe he wants to keep mana open. He does play the Surrender. I wanted to say maybe he wants to keep two blue open to possibly counter. Okay, taking it back here. Looking at his hand again. I mean, this shows how strong Black Vice is. Just play Vice, play Howling Mine, copy the Vices, and go. You could even say maybe it would be, be even better to just copy the Howling Mine. Of course, it depends on what situation you're in. So Cyril, he's on 10. Two Vices on the board, and I believe Anis is going to take 6 damage. That's huge. He does have Counter Magic up. So if Cyril plays something, then Anis can empty his hand playing out that Counter Spell. That's going to save him 2 damage. Let's see what's going to happen here. And not quite sure whose turn it is. Okay, so I think there's a... Oh, he's playing a, a swords, countering his own swords. That is really funny. Doing this probably on the end step of Cyril. And of course, he's doing this to empty his hand. So he only takes two damage now. I'm going to go to five. This is a very good move. I believe he's going to go to 5 now because he's got 5 in hand. Should take 2 damage, right? If I'm not mistaken. It looks like his opponent wants to think this through, but is passing turn now. So he's going to draw 2 cards. He's going to attack. He's going to go to 6, but he still has to empty his hand. And again, he's not finding any more lands. That is the biggest problem for Anise here. He has to find lands. It looks like he's now just passing turn. He, he, I mean, he needs 2 more turns to kill Sudil. Sudil's on 6. And there we see a Swords in the hand of Cyril as well, but he doesn't want to play the Swords. He's, he doesn't want to give life to Anis, I guess. If he has a copy artifact, there is a Power Sink, and again, he's sinking his own sword. So doing the same trick again, emptying his hand. Wow, this is so funny. This is such a weird scenario. Like, all that Anis now wants to do is just empty his hand. And Cyril could consider, because I do think he's got a counterspell, he could consider, okay, he's playing a Psionic Blast on Anissa. And Anissa is going to drop to one, right? And yeah, I think, I think that's it, isn't it? Wow, that was a quick ending. I need to look at it again to see what happened there. Yeah, I could. Sorry, Blast, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I think this is a key. Yeah. Take this for the stack. Yeah. Say it like And so we have a draw of the first game. What a cool ending. I just, wow. I was at a certain point, like, it's going so fast. But of course, Psionic Blast is an instant. So while he's... Anis was saying it correctly. While the vice is still on the stack, he can play it out. And, you know, he was on one and Sadil was on four. So he deals four to Sadil and also he takes two. So that's a draw. So game one ends up in the draw. These players are going to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. And I'm really looking forward to this after watching that game one. That was very spectacular. So that ended up in a draw. And here we see an opener with Soul Ring. And there is a Vice again by Cyril. Just not as good when you're on the draw. And, oh, interesting. Also playing that Ivory Tower. Doesn't have a lot of cards in hand, though. Just one damage here for Anis because of that Vice. And what is he going to play for three? We'll just have to see. Does play after Tundra, so he could play a Surrender. Playing nothing, just passing turn. Interesting. And I believe only four cards for Cyril passing turn here. 
And there we see a disenchant on the vice in the end step. And also playing an ancestral recall. Wow, that is good. And interesting enough, Sidil has a counter spell, choosing not to counter because he wants uh, Anise to have cards. There is a power sink. He can count. Yeah, he counters the power sink. So this is quite interesting, right? Sidil is not countering the ancestral recall, but he is countering the power sink, which makes absolute sense when you look at the deck strategy of Sudil, but in any other moment you would say, are you insane? <laughs> Why are you doing that? So it's very cool to see Sudil really piloting this deck the way it's supposed to. Casting the second vice that gets countered away and then playing a Chaos Orb and pass turn here. So Anis still on 18, Sudil is still on 20. And he's playing another planes and that ivory tower is not doing much for Sudil. He really needs to draw into a vice, or uh, sorry, a howling mine actually. Check in the graveyard, probably just to see how many counter spells he's played out already. And with these decks, always like these kind of you know trick decks, control trap decks, um, opponents always want to have howling mines on board. And that is not a howling mine, but a soul ring. So Sidil is still waiting to draw into the into howling mines and hopefully copy artifact them. There is an icy manipulator, and icy is quite interesting, right? Because icy can also tap an artifact, and it can tap a howling mine, and then a howling mine gets deactivated. So that could cause a problem. And I think for Sudil, of course, he's got the chaos orb, so he can always activate the chaos orb. But in response, and he's going to play a disenchant if he has one, of course. So it's really up to Sudil to find the right moment to use the chaos orb. Right now, I guess there's not really a need to get rid of that Icy Manipulator. And okay, there we see a balance. I believe two cards in hand for Sudil. Not quite sure how many cards there are there for, uh, for Anis. Just think he's got to get rid of a lot of lands. So three lands are going to go and, and two cards maybe. So this is kind of interesting, right? Because Sidil wants Anis to have cards, but now he's forcing Anis to discard cards as well. So maybe this could be counterproductive. I don't know. Again, you know, uh, I assume Sidil knows what he's doing with his deck. And again, it's a very interesting game. We see Anis who's unable to find any creatures threats, at least at the moment. I wonder what he's going to do. Does he want to maybe tap the... What would he want to... Oh, he wants to tap the blue, of course, so that Sidil cannot counter. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. That's a very good play. And then he plays out the Surrender. And of course, Sidil can say, I'm going to put a blue in my mana pool. But then Anis can say, I'm going to go to combat. Then the blue gets out of the mana, and then in his second main phase, he can cast the Surrendip. And there we see a Swords to Plowshares on the Surrendip. So at least some life here for Anis. Going to go to 21. Ooh, this is good. A Brain Geyser. And that's a Brain Geyser for 5, I believe. So that is really good business. Maybe for 6 even. No, for 5, because he played the Swords earlier. Okay, so 5 fresh cards. Can he find a Howling Mine? And there we see another Surrendip and a Pass. Tapping down one of the lands with the Icy. He can, of course, also use a copy artifact to copy the Icy. That could be interesting as well. I'm really expecting a Howling Mine here from Sudil, but looking at his hand, I don't think he has it. Are we going to see an Armageddon? Is there an Armageddon? That would be interesting. Maybe he's thinking what to do first. Yeah, he's playing the Armageddon. Are we going to see a Counterspell? No Counterspell! Wow, this is interesting. He can play, of course, the Swords on the Urna. And the, yeah, this is what Sidil wants to do, right? And do I see an Island Sanctuary in the hand of Sidil? That is so sweet. That is such a cool card. Unfortunately for Sidil, um, Anis is finding a land here. And he's got three mana again. So, you know, if he draws into creatures, more land even. So... It looks like, okay, there's a disenchant on the soul ring in response to tapping down the soul ring. And then he's using the mana of the soul ring and he's to play the psionic blast, dealing damage to Sidil here, going to go down to 16. Both players are playing pretty fast. And look at that, Sidil is not finding any land where, you know, Anis is finding plenty of land. 
And that's kind of unfortunate here. Because I actually thought after that Armageddon, Brain Geyser and the Armageddon, I kind of thought, okay, Seville is going to steal the game here. But that's not the case because Anis just kept drawing into lands. But of course, we're not done yet. Four more life for Anis here. And that means he's going to go to 26. What a crazy game. And Seville just cannot find any lands. I mean, his hand is full. At least he's gaining life from the tower, right? Is he counting life from the tower? I hope he is. There's a copy artifact. There is a power sink. That is unfortunate. And it looks like Seville is just unlucky now. Let's see what Anis can do. He's also quite, Anis is quite low on cards. Gonna go through the graveyard to check the amount of counter spells. And yeah, you see the life total now ticking up. So Sadil is gonna go to 23, playing another copy artifact. And he's probably gonna copy the Chaos Orb, right? And then maybe flip the orb. Yeah, so he's gonna copy and I'll flip it on the IC manipulator. Yep, yeah, that's a hit. So the IC is gone. I mean, copy artifact is such a good card. There we see a disenchant. In response, of course, he's going to use it, but only he can only use it on a land. And that's 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 a pretty good deal for Anis, you know. He traded a land for an orb and, of course, a disenchant, but I think he's got enough lands. Passing turn here. The problem here for Anis, though, is that, you know, Sadil is just ticking up on life. You know, he's, he's now in 24. And there's a copy artifact on the Howling Mine. Wow, so that means three cards. And I mean, that Vice is gonna do some work. Ooh, there's a Black Lotus. There's a land. So Anis is gonna empty his hand probably. There's a Surrender Pafrit. We also see a Control Magic there in the hand of Surreal. So he could decide to take over the Surrender. There is another Howling Mine. This is the game he wants to play. Just flood his opponent with cards with that vice out. And now it's up to, uh, to Anis to really try to find a disenchant. Attacking for three here. But Sadil still has plenty of life because of that Ivory Tower. What an interesting match. Gonna crack the Lotus. Play the Sarah Angel. Is there a response by Sadil? Looks like there isn't. There's the counter spell. Okay, countering the Sarah Angel. And then he's going to gain life again. And he's going to draw tons of cards. There we see the Sapphire, and he still has a Control Magic in hand. Does he want to take? Okay, he does. I thought maybe he doesn't. In response, there is a Swords. So Anis is playing a Swords on his own Surrender, gaining some life. And he's pretty successful actually in emptying his hand all the time. But it's still looking really, really good for Sadil. I mean, three Howling Mines of Ice and that Ivory Tower. Don't forget about that Ivory Tower. He's tanking so much life. It's going to be so tough for Anis. But this could also, ooh, disenchant on the vice. Because what I wanted to say, this could also kind of end up of, in one of the two players decking themselves. Yeah, and that's interesting, playing a brain geyser. And are you not always playing it on himself? Because you could even consider waiting and then maybe playing it on Sadil. I'm not quite sure. It looks like they have plenty of cards still, but it's going to go really fast. Remember, these guys are drawing four cards every turn. There's Library of Lang. And it's now, you know, Seville really wants to find another vice now. And that, that library of Lang is just ideal right now. There's another Tundra. And how many creatures does Ani still have? Okay, steel artifact, probably coming from the sideboard. And he's going to steal the ivory tower. Wow. That is funny. That is so funny. And actually, when you steal a vice, I believe uh, the target of the vice doesn't change because when you cast it, you choose target player. So it's a card that you cannot, you can steal it, but it doesn't change the target. It still targets you. That's an interesting thing to note, perhaps. And there is a time walk and a Savannah Alliance. 
So Anis is really doing business here. A second Savannah lines. Untapping. He's going to gain life. I have no idea how much life he has right now, but just he's got he's got a lot. He's got to have a lot. So he's going to draw four cards. Just insane. He's going to attack for four, I assume. Yeah, and Sadio's kind of chilling. I think he kind of knows the writing on the wall. This is going to be really tough. So he's taking four damage. Going to go to 22, I believe. It's kind of hard to see the score right now. Another Savannah Lions. I mean, I believe he also has a Wrath of God in his deck. Does he have it in hand? He could play Wrath of God. Yeah, okay, here's the Wrath. Will it resolve? That's a big question. Love Wrath of God, by the way. Oh, Power Sink. Oh, huge. Big, big Power Sink. There's nothing Sudo can do against this. I mean, he could have considered... Oh, interesting. Of course, Island Sanctuary will keep him safe from the lions. That is so funny. I love it. Also playing a vice. And kind of that vice and ivory tower is going to keep each other in check. You know, so see Cyril kind of pointing at that. So Cyril actually needs a copy artifact or a second vice to actually deal some damage. I really think one of these players is going to deck themselves. They're drawing four cards a turn. There's a disenchant. This is big. This disenchant is big because that means those lions can now attack. So he's going to attack for six. That's what he does. So he's going to go, I believe he's now on 16, but I'm not quite sure. I can't see that th uh, third die there. But I believe he's on 16 right now. There's a pass. What an interesting game this is. What an interesting game. And <laughs> look at those hands. They're so full. Another ref. Oh, counterspell. He does have a swords. Could have considered playing the swords first, actually. So there's the swords, maybe kind of luring out uh, a possible um, a possible counterspell. Even more life for Anis here. There's a Psyblast getting rid of all those lines right now. He is taking two damage though. So yeah, he's going to go down to 14. He's going to take another four. He's going to go down to 10. I mean, he's on 10. Oh, look at the amount. He's, he's only got one turn left. I think he's decked himself. What can he still do? I think this is it. Yeah, Chaos Orb is not gonna, gonna do anything. I mean, he's got three Howling Mines. That's it. Wow, 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 wow. And remember, I said it, there was a moment in the game when Anis played his Brain Guys, and I was like, maybe you should play it on Cyril instead. And of course, that's not what you normally would do. But with games like this, there's, there are different rule sets. It's just when, when Cyril, Cyril decided not to counter the Ancestral Recall, that's also something that normally you wouldn't do. Wow. Anyway, uh, this match actually went to Cyril. So Cyril, you've won this one. Maybe you're wondering why, because it's only... Uh, one game that he has won thus far, but this is played at a tournament and at, uh, like every tournament, there's a limit to the amount of time that you can play your games. I believe there was a 50 minute uh, time limit and maybe you're then wondering why isn't this video that long? Well, that is of course because uh, I play these uh, these matches at twice the speed and also I cut out all you know the uh, the shuffling, all the sideboarding, all that. So I only show you pure game time times two, right? So unfortunately this was the last game played in this match and i'm saying unfortunately unfortunately because i would have loved to see more of this matchup i think both of these decks really they created such an interesting kind of chemistry it was it was so interesting to see so thank you anis and thank you Cyril, for these beautiful decks um especially Cyril, man it's really interesting to see white and blue uh, a deck built around uh, Black Vice. I mean, I do know the decks that are built around the Millstone, but uh, this Black Vice blue and white combination, for me, it's kind of new. So it's quite interesting. So thank you for bringing that to the table. And, and saying that, I guess when most people play Vice in a blue and a white deck, they will add stasis to the mix and you kind of get a completely different deck. So, you know, it's interesting to see your take and how you've done that uh, with this with this deck. So anyway, thank you very much. And also I would like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic 
And uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. All that helps. Uh, you can also, of course, leave a like, leave a comment, share this video on your socials. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is that you can become a sponsor of the show by becoming a patron via Patreon. Timmy Talks has its very own Patreon page, and there you can support the channel financially. It already starts with $1 a month. And, you know, what do you get back for that? Well, actually quite a lot. First off, you're supporting the show. But secondly, we also have a pretty cool Discord that you can be a part of. I organize tournaments to thank my channel members and patrons, so of course you can join into that as well. And last but not least, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. So after every Timmy Talks episode, there's an end scroll with all the patrons and channel members. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, the wunderbar, the great and the courageous channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te somber gezien. 